So the month of Ramadan is over, a month where Muslims have to fast from dawn to sunset, day in and day out for 29 or 30 days. Now, that's all good if you want to fast. But what if you don't believe in the religion? Well, if you're like me, you're lucky. I live in Canada. I can get away with it. There's no pressure on me to fast or to pray. However, what if you live in Pakistan, one of the most difficult countries for ex-Muslims and even for Muslim minorities such as Ahmadis and Shias, and even for Muslims who have legitimate reasons not to fast, such as having diabetes. It can be a nightmare. It can be so difficult and you're just stuck in this environment. We're going to see just how bad it gets. The whole country shuts down. I have a story of a, of a man. His name is Azad. That's his nickname. And he's going to tell us how in Ramadan, how his complete life changes as an ex-Muslim, how he has to hide, how he has to pretend to fast, how the social pressure can be crushing to be Muslim and to act Muslim, and even how non-religious people suddenly become religious and start policing you. Let's listen to his story, see what he has to say, and see what we can get and what we can learn. I'm your friendly ex-Muslim, and here is Azad. So here we have Azad and his story, Surviving Ramadan, an ex-Muslim journey in Pakistan's religious landscape. So Azad says, I have not publicly declared myself an ex-Muslim because doing so could easily cause my death. So he's not over-exaggerating because in Pakistan there is, you know, possibility of mob violence and this, this is what happens. And interestingly, it started off with this beautiful photo of friends ready for iftar and Ramadan, all sitting together, smiling, ready to break the fast. Now, you know, if, if Islam made it optional to fast and allowed water, I mean, I wouldn't really have a problem with it. I'd be like, you know what? It's fine. You want to fast? Fast. If you don't want to fast, don't fast. But like, if you want to, by all means. So let's read what he says. The Muslim month of Ramadan, which celebrates the first revelation from the angel Gabriel to Muhammad in 610 ends in a few days on April 9th and it is now ended. During Ramadan, every adult Muslim must fast from dawn to sunset. As one Muslim website explains, this means avoiding food and drink, including water, sexual activity, smoking, intoxication, and any impure thoughts. In Muslim majority countries, Ramadan also means that Islam dominates everyone's life even more than usual. <laughs> Notice how he says even more than usual. In Pakistan, with its increasing religious intolerance and strict Islamic laws, it is very difficult for ex-Muslims like me to survive at the best of times. And Ramadan makes it even harder. I have not publicly declared myself an ex-Muslim because doing so could easily cause my death. Living with my family in a small Pakistani city, I pretend I am a moderate Muslim. The commencement of the month of Ramadan means a complete change in lifestyle and daily routine. Working hours and conditions change. Most shops remain closed until the afternoon. All restaurants are closed until dusk. Most people who are not really religious outside the holy month <laughs> become more observant, aka the Ramadan Muslims. Islamic garb becomes more visible and beards grow longer. A lot of hijabs come on as well. Attitudes harden too, and anyone who is seen as not religious is made to feel unwelcome in this atmosphere. Though my family is relatively moderate and gives me space to be free, it's still risky to tell them I don't participate in Ramadan. Therefore, in front of them, I pretend to fast while secretly eating and drinking whenever I get the chance. There are two important meals during Ramadan. One is sahri or suhur. This is a meal that is eaten before dawn. You have to wake up very early to eat this meal. And if you miss it, you don't have anything to eat or drink until the day until the second meal, iftar, which is eaten at sunset to break the fast. You see, this is actually the experience of Muslims. I know many Muslims that are so tired from fasting all day that they go to sleep. Some of them go to sleep like when they come home after fasting and they sleep through the iftar and even worse, sometimes suhur. So you're literally missing both your meals and you have to fast the whole day again. Now, technically you're allowed to break the fast if you feel sick. So there is some sort of allowance, but of course it comes with guilt, right? And you feel like worried that, you know, I'm going to go to hell or something for missing the fast. I can do it. You tell yourself you can do it. You know what I mean? I've heard of people getting into car accidents in Ramadan because they're so sleep deprived. In fact, one of my family members, 
Doing Ramadan in Pakistan, it is very difficult to eat or drink during the daytime even if you are not fasting. Pakistan is a Muslim majority country and the majority of Muslims are here are devoutly religious, at least during Ramadan. So most people are fasting. There are also laws forbidding public eating and drinking during the day during Ramadan. Perhaps more importantly, the Pakistan version of Islam is a very insecure one. You have to display your you have to display your re religiosity if you want social approval. By the same token, it is considered compulsory to criticize and humiliate those who are not acting religiously during this month. People who engage in activities forbidden by Pakistani Islamic laws, such as sex outside marriage, drinking alcohol, selling drugs, tend to become very religious during this month, and they police the behavior of others. All the better to protect themselves from scrutiny. In 2013, a pawn seller was jailed for five days for violating the Ramadan sanctity ordinance, but it took him six years to get out of jail. Pan is this little tiny, um, it's like a sweet or it's like a snack that they eat that's made out of a beetle, beetle nut and beetle leaf. Um, in 1981, the notorious Pakistani dictator General Mohammad Zia ul Haq issued the Ehtram e Ramazan ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance was to protect the sanctity the sanctity of the month of Ramadan. During this ordinance, no person can eat or drink during Ramadan in any public place, including hotels and canteens. Anyone found eating or drinking can be sent to jail for three months. The law also forbids restaurant owners from selling or offering food to anyone during fasting hours. Cinemas and theaters are also bound by this law to be closed for the entire month. This law has caused much trouble for liberal non-practicing Muslims, non-Muslims and ex-Muslims. Not to mention if you have a period and you're a woman or if you have diabetes and you're a man or a woman and you're, or if you're breastfeeding or pregnant, all of the legal reasons to miss fasting, you still wouldn't be able to eat in public apparently, right? In 2013, a pawn seller was jailed for five days for violating the ordinance, but it took him six years to get out of jail. I have a few other ex-Muslim friends in my city who face similar problems too. The one public place where edibles are available is a hospital canteen. I think by, it doesn't mean like weed edibles, but like food. So whenever possible, one of us gets or rather smuggles edibles from the canteen and we gather in a private place to secretly enjoy our tea, food and water. This activity keeps us safe from prying eyes, but due to the nature of my work, I usually remain indoors. I live and work alone in the upper portion of my home. I rarely get any visitors, so I, so I have secretly kept some dates, a water bottle, and some other edibles which I can consume during fasting hours to maintain my body's nutrients. I sometimes get bored of this fare, but in this environment, I have little choice but to accept it. At least my family does not force me to recite the Quran or go to pray at the mosque. Overall, it's a better deal for me than for many others. Over the past few years, religious intolerance has grown in Pakistan. tehreek e Labaik Pakistan TLP is an Islamic extremist political party founded in 2015 that has become more and more prominent. This party openly calls for the murder of apostates and even for the execution of Muslims who commit acts deemed by the TLP as un-Islamic. Ex-Muslims and religious minorities like Ahmadi Muslims and Hindus are all living in a state of constant fear as the Islamists grow in number and influence. During Ramadan, even non-Muslims are forced to remain hungry and thirsty because they fear Muslim majoritarianism. You see, this is why we have to continue speaking out against these things because if we don't, the social pressures of the Muslim crowd and its heavy Islamic indoctrination and the fact is that Muslims are going to want to push this down other people's throats because that's how the religion is. So we have to constantly push back against it, or this is what happens. All of this impacts my life in multiple ways. Physically, my body needs a constant supply of food after short intervals to keep functioning, otherwise I feel giddy and drained. During Ramadan, therefore, it becomes very hard for me to function and I barely survive. So this is true. Some people do have a hard time fasting. Some people like just struggle with it, right? It's just hard for them. During Ramadan, therefore, it becomes very hard for me to function and I barely survive. This physical fun breakdown leads to mental health issues which impact my job, my relationships, and everything in between. During Ramadan, working hours also change, which affects me financially, meaning they get paid for less hours since they work less. For all these reasons and more, Ramadan is a nightmare month for me and thousands like me. Pakistan is becoming increasingly mired in extremism as the rise of the TLP shows. This marginalizes even further the many people who disagree with the majority religious view. 
Such people are unable to declare their true opinions and are forced into participating in a religious observance they do not believe in. Instead of policing people's religious beliefs or lack thereof, the Pakistani state should use its resources to improve the welfare of the Pakistani people. Efforts are better expended on the development of the country than on interference in religious affairs, which should be private. Pakistanis need to create a country where people with religious diverse Diverse religious views can coexist without any fear of the majority. A good start would be repealing the 1981 ordinance and allowing Pakistanis to make their own choices and which beliefs and practices they will subscribe to. Unfortunately, these ordinances, these laws, they're easy to pass but much harder to repeal. Anyone that wants to go against these laws will be seen as un-Islamic and becomes very, very hard. I know in Saudi, Right, Prince Salman has been doing a lot of reform on the religious influence, but he has like that sort of authority. Whereas in this country, you would be held hostage by the mullahs, right? So that just shows you just how bad it can get for minorities, for ex-Muslims, for even women that can't fast, right? For religious, for legitimately religious reasons, for legitimate reasons, and still those even condoned by. So this just shows you how hard it can get for minorities, for ex-Muslims, for even men and women who have religiously legitimate reasons to not fast. The whole country is shut down basically because of Islam. And this can be really hard for some people, especially if you don't believe in this and you have to go through this day in and day out. Let's continue to push for secularism, for Islamic reform, or for people to just leave Islam because as the numbers change, we're going to see that freedoms will appear for people that don't want to follow the religion. And of course, people that want to follow are welcome to follow, but there needs to be space for us that don't want to follow, right? Which is why the work of my channel and the work of other ex-Muslim activists and for secular activists, for free thinkers is so important. Please continue to support us, all of us, including my channel. If you'd like to join the Patreon, you can click on join now below or become a YouTube member. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.